Today's episode of the BS Podcast with Andy Cohen is brought to you by SeatGeek. That's our presenting sponsor and the only fan-friendly app for buying and selling tickets for sports and music. Drop your old ticket app. Use one bill for 2017 and beyond. 2017 is coming. You can even do absolutely everything on your phone. So download the free SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. Today's episode also brought to you by TuneIn. I have some good news. The Bill Simmons podcast is now playing on TuneIn. You can already listen to every episode on the TuneIn audio app for free. But right now, TuneIn is giving listeners 20% off its premium subscription for limited time. I was a subscriber before they became a sponsor. TuneIn Premium allows me to catch the home broadcasts of my beloved Patriots, Celtics, and Red Sox at home or on the road. Sean Grandy and Cedric Maxwell are back in my life thanks to TuneIn. Every play, every team, every game, it's a must for sports fans, especially if you don't live in your hometown anymore. And with TuneIn Premium, you don't get to just hear your favorite sports teams live. You'll get great commercial free music from around the world, plus unlimited access to every audiobook in the library of, of TuneIn, live or on demand. Go to TuneIn.com forward slash The Ringer to get TuneIn Premium at 20% off. Again, TuneIn.com forward slash The Ringer. 20% off. Download the TuneIn app right now and subscribe today. We're also brought to you by The Ringer Podcast Network and The Ringer. Dot com, where I wrote a big column with Malcolm Gladwell last week, and I might have another column coming this week. So you have to go to theringer.com to find out. All right, let's do this. All right, I'm here with Andy Cohen from Watch What Happens Live. Bravo, former executive? Yes, former executive. I was always fascinated by that. You were I in know, charge of the Bravo shows and then gave yourself a show, which well, I really appreciate and respect. I didn't give myself a show. It didn't really work out that way, but everyone thought that I did give myself a show. Well, who gave you show? the show if you didn't give you Lauren the show? Lauren Zelaznik and Jeff Zucker gave me the show. Okay. Um, I was doing, Lauren gave me a web show that I was doing after Top Chef and Project Runway, which became the basis for watch what happens live and so you got some reps so i was doing yeah i was doing uh i was doing the web thing and then they needed someone to host we needed someone to host a housewives reunion and my boss lauren said would you want to do it and i said yes i would love to do it are you kidding and then michael davies who you know yeah uh came to bravo and said i have this teeny little studio and if you ever wanted to do the show andy is doing online on the air i could do it for very inexpensively that's michael davies move he's, yes. like, he's like a hundred hundred millionaire and he's yes. always like i got this little tiny closet exactly. over here i might be able to make it work exactly that's, and that's why that's how he's it works. very rich and they, exactly and yeah. then they said to me do you want to do that and i was like yes absolutely and so they put it on at midnight once a week uh, on Thursday nights. And, <laughs> and that was it? And that was it. And so, and I thought, okay, this is going to be a 12 episode thing. And then it's going to go away. And the truth is, the ratings were good. And yeah. so, A, it is impossible as head of, even, even though I was head of programming, if I had gone to my boss and said, I want to give myself my own show and I want to become the face of the network, she would have said, I want you to run programming. Right. What do you think about that? Uh, so that's, and so thankfully for me, it w did well. And then they put it on two nights a week. And then there was a, and then I was push. I was like, I want you to make this a five night a week show. And then I'll eventually leave my job. And that's what happened. How did, what, was there an invisible line that got crossed when all of a sudden celebrities were coming on and feeling comfortable? Because that's a hard place to get to with celebrities. Yeah. Um, I called every favor in the book with, I happen to have some good, famous friends. Yeah. And I called a lot of them to get them on the show during that first 12 episode thing. I got Sarah Jessica Parker and Liam Neeson and Liam Neeson. Exactly. And so he wasn't trying to find his daughter. No, he okay, was not. Yeah. No, at that point, I think it was between take and film. So he had a handle I'm on a where huge she fan, was. Obviously, yeah. you can tell by my roadhouse thing. Yes, I, I love course. that genre. Of yeah, movies. exactly. Uh, and God, Swayze looks like he's packing a little heat in those mom jeans. Actually, <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know. I thought what that I was... was the famous Liam Neeson thing, wasn't he? Isn't oh, no, he Liam like has the biggest dick on the planet. Yeah, he's like yes. legendary for that, right? Yes, he is. Yes. 
That's that's why he's so calm in the Taken movies. It's, that's why he's so calm he's so, in life. He's got such good balance. He's yes. like a human tripod. Ex that's exactly <laughs> right. And he has long legs. <laughs> so you called in favor. Show takes off. Show but takes did you off. know you wanted to be a TV star? It just I wanted happened. to be on camera at the very beginning of my career, and I but I gave it up pretty quickly because I uh, I gave it up quickly because I was told I had horribly crossed eyes uh, by my someone that I was an intern for at CBS News at my last internship. That and the fact that was I that loved, just got in your head. What'd you say? That got in your head? It got or? in my head. And then also, I loved being in New York. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to move to local markets and try to be a local reporter. I think I'd rather just move to New York and try to get a job behind the scenes at CBS News and see what happens. And I wound up spending 10 years at CBS News. And, um, and yeah, it was it was great. And, and so I kind of gave it up. I gave it up my dream of being on the air. Wow. And I wound up at Bravo. Barry Diller offered me a job to run programming at his cable channel that he was starting called Trio, which was a, a channel that wound up being kind of brilliant, but canceled. And, uh, and, but it, it, and then I was offered a job by the woman who had been running Trio, who, who then got moved over to Bravo to run programming at Bravo. And at the time, they were starting Logo, which was, is the gay channel on, that Viacom owns. And I was like, I don't want to work at Bravo. I would, I would rather go run this Logo channel. I was like, there's no one gayer than me. So, like, <laughs> why wouldn't they hire me? And they didn't hire me. And it's kind of turned out. I realized when I wrote my first book, I had forgotten that story. And then yeah. I was like, wow, if I had gotten that logo job, I wouldn't be Bravo Andy. I wouldn't be writing this book. I wouldn't be the house. You know, like none of this would have happened for me. Go back to Trio for a okay. second. I like Trio. Oh, you did? Trio had the old Letterman reruns. Trio had... Although they gave Joel Stein a week, and at that point I had my own call at ESPN. I was really bitter about it. You were? I was like, really? Joel Stein gets a week? Like, I, and I and she... then he played the Battle of Network Stars yes. card, which I totally would have played. Yep. And yep. I just felt cheated by the whole thing. And I, it made me I hate had, Joel Stein. I understand. Yeah. I understand. But yeah, Trio was, it, it Trio was, was a cool. good experiment. I love it that you know that. It was a great experiment. It was kind of what... Uh, to me, if PBS decided that they wanted to be a little cooler and a little more high-low, then that's what this was. It was a pop culture and arts channel uh, with a lot of original documentaries. It was a really cool channel. Well, you know what else, our trio? YouTube took off like in 06. Yeah. And part of the appeal right. for me with Trio was like, oh, I used to love that right. show. Oh, they're yes. showing that. That's right. And then it's like, oh, it's on YouTube. It's a really good point. And then that was it. So You're Bravo right. you go to. What state is Bravo in? When you, what year do you get there? I got there in, in 2004. And what happened is they were in production on season one of Project Runway. The Queer Eye had started. Yeah. Uh, so it was the beginning of the big transformation at Bravo. And then after I was there came, you know, four more seasons of Runway. We developed and uh, got Top Chef going. We got Millionaire Matchmaker flipping out The Real Housewives, Rachel Zoe, um, uh, and it just starts Southern rolling. Charm, Vanderpump, on and on and on. Real Housewives. Yeah. How, how does that happen? Whose idea is that? That happened through a series of events of a gentleman named Scott Dunlop coming to Bravo with home video of his neighbors in Coto de Caso, whose hair was blonder, their boobs were bigger. And he, I don't know what his initial idea for the show was. I kind of remember that he wanted to do kind of a mockumentary kind of show i don't well this was during the time of the hills and this Laguna was during Beach the time and... of the hills but these women weren't actresses and um i always loved soap operas yeah growing up i loved all my children to me i was like wait a minute these women live in a cul-de-sac 
They all go to the same tennis club. They all eat at the same places. They live in the same gated community. It sounds like a reality not slanding, you know, like yeah. a, a reality soap opera. At the time, Desperate Housewives was the biggest show on TV. Yeah. So we said, okay, well, what if we do this kind of soap opera -y show from the point of view of the women? You're going to barely see or hear from the husbands was the original concept. It's all going to be about the women. And we'll call it The Real Housewives. And that's kind of how it started. In I remember its there beginnings. was some controversy, right? When like Desperate Housewives weren't they mad about Real Housewives, or it was probably. a storyline for like a week? Yeah, probably. There was a moment also where in at the beginning of the Real Housewives, they all hold oranges. Yeah. And legal at um, NBC Universal said, "Oh, we can't do that because Desperate Housewives they're holding apples," and. Um, and I remember Lauren Zelaznik, who ran Bravo, said, ABC doesn't own fruit. We can, right. you know, we can do this. And then, thank God, we pushed ahead because then New York is holding apples and Atlanta's holding peaches. So what do you, let's go through the housewives because I may or may not have dabbled in that universe. I think you have. I have. My, yeah. my wife liked the New York one and the Beverly Hills one. Yes. We never I really watched you Atlanta. Being in Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills is my favorite one. Jam. That's yeah, your jam. Yeah, I really yeah. liked that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was good. I I liked uh, who's the 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 tall one who was. Oh, and I'm blanking. Brandy. Brandy. Yeah. So I saw her in person, uh -huh. and she was like tall and beautiful. I was she surprised. Is. Yeah. You forget like yeah. these are like some yeah, dudes, Mac Daddy dudes ladies. Love them some Brandy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think is the the best like all around pound for pound start to finish year one through year whatever just what's been the best which, one of all oh of them? my god you're asking me to pick which city not asking you to pick i'm asking you as a programming executive <laughs> no, to know. just admit what the best one was Gosh. what brings the most to the table from what you want from the real housewives franchise i would say new york i don't think i can do it i mean has new I, york had the most twists new and york turns and drama and, i love new york so much like i just think for me it's the funny uh, that and atlanta are the funniest but then jersey you you just put the first three seasons of jersey up against anything and it's like a freaking it's like the godfather trilogy so it's really <laughs> hard to it's really hard to discount that you've got the uh just homespun uh, connection of the OC ladies that really started it all and then Atlanta which is just kind of bigger and funnier and louder and more glam than any of the rest so it's just a hard thing so Atlanta can we say that one's the wildest Atlanta's the number one by the way yeah. I want to point oh, out yeah. Atlanta gets the biggest ratings and of should. all of them uh, and it's it's yeah it is it is kind of the loudest yeah, yeah. New York New York, I would say, is the highest society almost. It takes um, us into worlds that. No. no, would you say Beverly? No, I'd say Beverly Hills yeah. is. Yeah, Beverly Hills but that, is see, the richest because I, I live out here. I know, like yeah, half right. of that's like. Well, it's but you, people pretending they have more I money know. than well, they do. Perception is, you know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some of them do, like that with David Foster. Yes. Like he, yeah, he really has absolutely. lots and lots of money. Yes, that's but true. But some of the other ones seem like they're kind of fudging. It right. I mean, the Maloofs, they owned part of the Kings, right? That was the heyday of Be of the Bev yeah. Hills one. Yeah, yeah. You had the Maloofs. You had Brandy's kind of sneaking in. You uh -huh. had the two sisters. Yes. The one who's acting radically and nobody yes. will say why. Who was yes. that, Kim? Kim, yes. They've said why now. Now, they, yes. <laughs> now we yes. know. We kind of knew at the season, time, but season, now we definitely yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, Season Season five. See season four and five, I think, on that. Kyle, who was the little girl in Halloween one. Yep, that's right. Which totally. is very bizarre. Yeah. Quick break to talk about our friends at Casper. Let's talk about a perfect mattress that's sold directly to consumers. Let's talk about an award-winning sleep surface developed in-house with a sleek design delivered in a small, how did they do that size box? Let's talk about Casper mattresses. They combine springy latex and supporting memory foams for a sleep surface that's got just the right sink and just the right bounce for people like the Simmons kids who have Casper mattresses. Plus, it's breathable design sleeps cool to help you regulate your temperature through the night. Mattresses can often cost well over 1500 bucks, but Casper mattresses cost 500 for a twin size, 750 for a full, 850 for a queen, and 950 for a king. Casper will deliver your mattress to you risk-free. Try it for 100 days, and if you're not happy, they will pick it back up. Find out why so many people love Casper. Get $50 toward any mattress purchase right now by going to casper.com slash BS. 
and use code BS. How easy is that? Terms and conditions apply again. Casper.com slash BS. Back to Andy Cohen. Was there a Real Housewives that just didn't work and you had to scrap it? Uh, well, DC got uh, tanked by the big White House party crash, if you'll remember the story that dominated the news uh, for a period of yeah. months. The Salahis infamously crashed oh, yeah. the White House, which was uh, turned out to be an explosive two-part finale of the Real Housewives of DC. But it also happened to be the series finale of the show because the show had such a stink on it from that party crash that it was like there was no going back. I actually liked that one. Yeah, I, I would say worthwhile attempt. Yeah. Probably a lot of <laughs> landmines, though. A, a lot, lot of places you can't go. Well, yeah. Washington's when you, when, very secretive in general. When you have the FBI and... You know, the government trying to look at your raw footage from the housewives. Right. Maybe you think, you know what? Maybe we're not going to do this again. Is there a city that hasn't gotten a real housewives yet that you've kept circling back to and just haven't We've been able to talk cast, yourself in it? You know, we wound up doing Dallas. It was kind of a really shock move on our part. Like we, we just brought out Dallas like 10 years into the game. We had been circling around Texas for a lot of years on and off. Um, there was... A moment there's where one we, I have. What'd you say? There's one that I think you should do. Tell Maybe me. you've done it and I just missed it. Aspen? I think we're ready for Real Housewives of the Silicon Valley. You have cast it. You have so much money there. Yeah, it's and true. So much and, then, weirdness. and we did a reality Trophy show. Trophy wives. Yes. Yeah, wives that are way too young for the old guy. Yep. I and mean, there's a lot I would be I interested agree. in. Yeah, I agree. They can go to we've San Francisco. We've casted Napa but, before. Didn't Napa's happen. got a lot of yeah. drinking. So yes. you, when you say casted, what does that mean? It means that either we have paid production companies or casting people to go to a town and just... Like a sweep. Do, do a sweep, go to the country clubs, find groups of friends, put them all on tape, tell us what you find. Do you put ads? Um, they've done... They, they sometimes will put out ads saying we are casting for a group of women. A lot of times, um, I remember, I think there have been several companies who've gone to Scottsdale and said, we're casting for the real outsides of Scottsdale, but it's never been us. We never sanctioned anyone. It was like, they're just casting and then they're, they plan to come pitch it to us. So... It's kind of weird because then I start getting these tweets like, oh, I auditioned for your show. I'm like, it's not really us. It's someone else trying to pitch it to us. It gets a little janky. You know. Yeah. All right. So you go to I'm trying to think of a Silicon Valley country club. I so know. You go that's to like, the, are there wherever, wherever the hell it is, whatever, like one of the rich parts of Silicon Valley is. So you just send somebody to the country club. And they're just kind of boots hanging on the around ground. and, boots and on the sniffing ground. it, sniffing you know, out the people. Like I, I don't understand yeah, how that I think works. So I think you find people in the town who go to a lot of charity events. You start talking to charity them. events is a good one. Yeah, I mean, you know, you start talking to people. One thing leads to another. There's a famous story about season one of New York Housewives. We were down a housewife, and Jill Zarin took the producer to uh, Polo, Bridgehampton Polo, which is a lot of people who are the type that would want to be on a show like this. And that's where she found Bethany Frankel. So, yeah. I mean, you know, there you go. Who is the MVP? Probably the, the, I'm going to say biggest star you've had as yeah, a housewife. I'm going to say she, I'd put Nene leaks up there. I'd put Lisa Vanderpump up there. Got to throw Vicky Gunvalson, the OG of the OC up there. There's What's, some Teresa Judice. There's some stalwarts. Jersey kind of freaked me out. I understand, Bill. I, that was my least favorite one. It just got too dark for me. Uh, you want to yeah. do a pillow yeah, adjustment? Yeah, I'm doing a pillow okay. adjustment. Um, Lisa Vanderpump. Uh-huh. There's like a 25-year age range of if you told me how old she was that yeah, I would believe. I well, it's so funny you that you say that. You could tell me she's 85 no, and I, I would know. believe At that. At the beginning, it was like... At the beginning, it was like, is she 70? Like, it was this is weird thing. Is she 40? Is she 80? I, think, I believe she's in her, um, like, early 50s. Look it up, Tom. Tommy. Early 50s? I think she's There's like 50. There's no way. She's 56. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. then she's 68. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, no, then she was able to change it on Google very quick, you know, on the web. That's hard to Move do. That, you know what I mean? I, I love the husbands, which was, I thought... 
the best part of the Beverly Hills one was the husbands because yeah. you have Ken, yes, the Lisa husband who's walking around with the with the poodle. Yes, he's exactly. got. I don't. I don't even know how to he's describe got kind of his Rod hair. Stewart hair. He's open about the fact that he never has sex with his wife, yes. which is like they might have sex once a year, yeah, which is always fascinating or to me. Day, yeah, it's like yeah. her birthday, right? Yeah, or Valentine's. See that guy, you're the real estate guy who's Mauricio. married to. Yeah, Mauricio, Kyle's who's husband. clearly. Clearly, uh, very Italian, and yeah, I, I don't know. I he's just a, feel like he's kept... a Mexa Jew. Is it Mexa Jew? Yeah, what does that mean? Mexican Jew, he's not Italian. No, his he's name's a... Mauricio, and he's know, not it's Italian. A, it's weird. I know. I kept waiting for like the huge adultery scandal with him, but apparently, that's know. not happening. I know. Kim, uh, they seem to really what's her name? They love each other a lot. Not Kyle Kim Richards, Kyle, Kyle, yeah, Kyle gets yeah. him happy. Yes, nice kids. Some of the yeah. kids blossom out of this and I become know. well. I mean, Gigi Hadid, Gigi's you like know, a Yolanda's... she was on Kimmel show a month ago. Yeah, she's huge, but I do like the husbands. Who do you think's been the most entertaining husband? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I, Simon Van Campen, early New York Housewives, was quite entertaining. They're usually entertaining, maybe for the wrong reason, maybe, you know? He, all of those answers are wrong. It's Ken. Ken? Ken's the best. He's What great. else would you want from Ken? No, I Who get else everything walks from around Ted? holding a small dog? No, it's I get like every, he's a Bond no, I villain. Know. I know. I know. I get everything from Ken. You're right. What was they had that guy who was living at his house? They, the Cedric, guy who betrayed them? Cedric. Season Cedric? one, yes. He that, betrayed That got them. weird. Yes. How much stuff have you had to cut out of these shows because Bravo might have gotten sued if the wrong information came out? Or well, like, I mean, they was all there any releases, stuff? but yeah, I mean, there have been some tricky moments. Yeah. Tricky. That's yeah. a very evasive answer for yes. somebody who's written three books. That's right. You're saving that for book number four? No, I mean, look, yeah, I'm saving it for when uh, the show's off the air and I'm, you know, I, I don't, I'm not. What are these how many shows are, are seven. going now? There's seven. There's seven. And there's no, everybody wants us to do Housewives All Stars. And I'm like, look, when the gas is running out, we'll throw 10 of them on an island for a month and then, you know, it'll be great. Housewives All Stars? Yeah. Well, yes. What does that even look like? What does it look like? It looks like You're putting what, them in like the Bahamas. What, what would the world look like if you had Tamra, Phaedra, Erica, Jane, Dorinda, and Ramona on a boat together? I mean, you know what? What isn't awesome also, about that? A boat, a boat, an island, a confined space, like Cabo. Yeah, for sure. Two months. Yes. Con two weeks. I think it's a confined space. Like confined space. Put them in a zoo. Yes, confined space. Hot box. Hot box environment. So when you film those reunion specials, which is really yes. the bread and butter, yeah. there's so much you, what do you split them into three parts? Yo, yeah. I'm like, I'm always the guy who at lunchtime, I turn to the producers and I'm like, you guys know that we're working on a three parter now. And they're like, no, uh, no, 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 no. We do not have it's enough definitely for three. Two. I'm like, uh, I haven't gotten to this, 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 this. And then I'll leave and I'll be like, it is, we have three, you guys. And there have been one or two times in Atlanta where I'm like, we're looking at a four-parter. Four-parter. Yeah, we did. I think we did a four-parter once for Atlanta. How long do you have them trapped in that confined that, space? That's a hot box. That's like about a 10-hour situation. There. 10 hours? You know it, Bill. What? Yeah. First of all, there are some spackling breaks where you got to re-spackle the houses. Uh, there are some lunch breaks you have to factor in for some walk-offs. You have to factor in for some, some I love the nipple offs. tape. They always have to come back. Um, nipple tape. They got to come back. You got, you know, sometimes amid, you know, around five o'clock, they want us to start popping bottles to get them through the next three, four hours. And then if, if daddy has a dinner reservation, he starts getting cranky around seven, eight o'clock. And I'll be like, you guys got, I'm, I have a dinner at nine. So I would say that would be the hardest on you. Yes. Like, do you, what's your process? Do you have like a giant, all these index cards that you're I trying do. to remember I mean, look, to go through? My process is that I'm actually an executive producer of the show all season long, and I know every inch of what's happened. So I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in. It's like you with basketball. What's your pro? You don't need anything. You're ready to go. That Put is true. I don't need anything. Right, exactly. I'm ready to roll. Go. So you're just going boom. Do you ever yeah. feel like? Don't oh, you think they should do reunion shows at the end of basketball seasons? Why are you not doing that? It'd be amazing. I mean, with the team. I would I mean, love like, to host it. By the way, talk to the NBA. It's like, 
I want to do the reunion show for the Warriors this season. And then you get them all together. And then what's funny about that idea I think is that's that actually like an amazing idea. No, but what's funny about that idea is it would be so great with Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant and Draymond Green. Like, right. Kevin, uh, Russell was really dismissive of you early in the year. And right. Him just sitting there stewing. Right. <laughs> Russell would definitely walk off at some point and then have yeah. to come back because contractually yes. you have to come back. Right. That's a great idea. It is. Well, you know, they do. I know it's not your network, but they do that Basketball Wives show. Yes. Which is, I, I, it feels like that should just be on Bravo. It bothers it me. It does. It's and a little you, more it ratchet. Like, well, that's then, what I mean. It feels uh, like you could do a better class version. Right. right. Um, I, I haven't seen much, but it seems fairly one note, which is just all... A hundred. I note. would say fairly is the wrong word. Right, I would right, just say it's one right. note. Yeah. I think the great thing about the Housewives is uh, one of the great things. If it was all one note, it, we wouldn't still be talking about it 11 years later. It's actually funny. And it's it's there are people that you root for and root against and people that you love and love to hate. It's, it's like it's a good soap opera. Not only is it not one note. But when somebody throws a glass of champagne at somebody else on a yeah. Real Housewives show, uh -huh. it has real meaning. It does. It doesn't happen that often. No. It's really, you feel the, oh, yeah, no. you feel the yes. anger when it happens. It may, Beverly Hills, I think it's happened once or twice. Seven seasons. Right. You know what I mean? Has there been an or What's the weirdest thing that's been thrown at somebody? Hors d'oeuvres? No. Just wine. Like a shrimp cocktail with no. some cocktail sauce on no it? No shrimp. Just wine. Just wine. Yeah. Has there ever been like a, there's been a legitimate fist fight in the Jersey one, right? Um, their Jersey has had a couple fisticuffs. I got thrown by a rag doll by Teresa at a reunion once. What are you talking about? Um, she pushed me, she pushed me I was really? getting between her and where she wanted to be. Yeah. It's an amazing piece of tape. I, I don't know yeah, how I, I didn't see that. That's yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. Is it at least pushed. a gif? So oh, the internet is a gift. It's the it gift that keeps on giving. Are you kidding me? It's the most Who's favored? Gift? If you and Teresa just throw down, uh, uh, she's a. Tough... I would say she's favored. Yeah, she's. I don't know. I'm she's stronger really... than you might think. But you know what? She's, but she's got crazy. The... You're not yeah, crazy. She, yeah, crazy, exactly. though. You know what? I'm a nice Jewish guy from St. Louis. She wins the fight. Well, yeah. she at least keeps fighting until seven people are pulling yes. her. It's true. Or telling her to go there's, away or take a walk. It's kind of amazing. Oh, there yeah, you. that's. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. What was your reaction after that happened? You know what? I was um, kind of in shock and just trying to run the reunion. And I semi forgot about it. And I remember at the end of the day, I was like, did I get pushed? And when I saw the footage in the super tease for the reunion, I was like, this is the I thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen. I thought it was hilarious. You're like Vince McMahon. I thought it was awesome. I loved it. I thought it was well, great. so where does reality go? Because if you think about in the it Trump now, world, well, I mean, all right, well, that's a whole separate yeah, conversation. No, that, that but is. like, it seems like the shows that are successful now are the same shows that were successful five years ago. You know, well, that's also TV. I mean, it's harder to. Why isn't there new innovation or, anymore? Let's see. Well, Lip Sync Battle is a unscripted big hit show. Is that, um, does Lip Sync Battle have a seven year run? I don't think so. Um, I think it's too, it relies too much on who the celebrities are. Right. And they're going to run out of that. Right. Like, w w something like Housewives, you just keep going for yes. 30 years. Well, and it's there's a more great, cities it's to a go great to. formula because it's not dependent on one woman. You, we mix it up every season. You bring Nobody's people bigger in than and out. the brand. The brand right. always wins. That's right. And that's like, same thing with Survivor. Yeah. Um, I love Survivor. And if Celebrity Apprentice wins, there's a case of the brand being bigger than who the host was. I'll be able right. to see if it works or not. But yeah. it's surprising to me that there hasn't been really a monster reality show franchise created in the in maybe even it's this true. decade. I'm trying to think. Uh, MTV still has Real World and the Challenge, and that's it. Yeah, yeah uh, I don't even know if MTV still does the Real World. Yeah, they, they do. It does. Oh. There's been there's a stealth yeah. one going on right now. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I forget what city it is. Oh, okay. But yeah, it seems like everything moved toward cooking. Yeah, which is something yes. you guys were in on earlier. But there's so yep. many cooking shows now, yep. or trying to find, kitchen. you know, people trying to find stuff. Yeah, like those uh, those things where they open the is, lockers and. Yeah, is naked and afraid a big show? Naked and naked right. and something. maybe it all yeah, sprinters. Right. Mm. And, and then obviously you have The Bachelor and shows right. like that, but those yes. are also shows. Those are old have, shows. 
um, been around for a while. So I, I can't figure yeah. out where it goes or why there hasn't been a new one. Yeah, I don't know. And you can't either, obviously. I can't either. Well, you're too I'm busy now. To you don't riding. have time to innovate no, I don't. anymore. I'm happy to be riding the train I'm riding on, actually. Quick break to talk about Betterment. How should I manage my money? That's a great question. And whether you're a multi-million dollar investor, or you're just starting out, the answer is Betterment. Betterment is the largest independent automated investing service managing more than $5.5 billion for over 100,080 100, customers as of September 2016. Their mission is to help people manage and grow their wealth. That's why they develop smarter technology that automates investing, helps you make better financial decisions, and helps you invest for your personal goals. Betterment provides investing advice through smart technology with real people to help with account support. Keep more of your money with fees that are a fraction of what you could pay for traditional financial services. And I know investing involves risk, but right now my listeners can get up to six months of no fees at Betterment. To learn more, visit Betterment, M-E-N-T at the end there, Betterment.com slash B-S. That's Betterment.com slash B-S. Betterment, investing made better. All right, back to Andy Cohen. Do you guys feel like you're number one? Does who feel like we're number Bravo. one? Bravo. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not in charge of programming at Bravo anymore. I ah, think Bravo there, is. Though. I think Bravo is definitely. I think Bravo has a really strong brand, and they're doing. I mean, it's like, it doesn't seem like they are in any form of letting up and they've got you know they've got a good bench um besides the housewives they have vanderpump rules and top chef and yeah. southern charm and below deck and a lot of shows that have become big actually in the last few years for them so what about like so the streaming like netflix and hulu all these things and you can get stuff you can catch up on seasons yeah is there a sh any of the housewife shows or anything else? I think that the housewives might on? be on Hulu. Yeah, I think they might be on. But Hulu. is that do those have a shelf life in that? Like a retroactive? That's a good up? question. I mean, I think people, you know, weirdly, people who love the housewives, they love to go back and watch old episodes. Yeah. So, and people, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who are like, "Look, I've never seen it. Which city should I start on?" I'm gonna. People love binging now that it's actually not unheard of that they would say, and I'll say, like, "Look, uh, you know, you, you can't beat Jersey. Watch the first three seasons and see what happens." You know, you know, I, I think those shows have an interesting effect on the viewer because my wife, who always talks about like, uh, like different shows, they're her friends. You know, like sex, when Sex in the City finally ended, yeah. she was like, "I'm bummed out." Those, those yeah, people my friends. were my friends. Yes, exactly. she didn't know any of them. Right, right. But she felt like, no, people feel the same way about the Housewives, a hundred percent. Like Bethany, she's like, "I like Bethany. I'd be friends with her." Like right. they just assume, and I think that's been a big reason for your success. Yeah, so I think people feel like, "Oh, that's." I don't have a gay friend, but if I did, I, I, that would be my gay friend. I think that's, I mean, you hit it. And I've heard it from so many, I'm on a book tour right now. And I've heard it when I go out, I hear from so many women, like you're my gay best friend. And I love that. I think it's awesome. And I think, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. My wife thinks there should be a match.com to match up married women with gay friends. That's, uh, that is a that's really like her million good dollar, idea. billion dollar idea. That is a great idea. She's like, I would just like, I, I just want, I, I never get to, and it's like, I, there's just be a GBF, website. I'm like, GBF. all right, well, I don't know what that website would be called. It would be called GBF and yeah. G -G <laughs> gay guys looking for, that's it. Yes. You, you could start that. I also have a, a reality idea for you. Okay. I just, I just get, I get a co-creator thing and that's okay. it. You can do it. Malibu little league. Wow. So there's this little league field in Malibu. Yeah. Right across from Pepperdine. Okay. That's on a cliff. Yep. It's beautiful. It's, it's like, you can't even believe this is a little league field. It's literally the Pacific. It's, have you ever seen the Pepperdine campus? Where yes, the yeah, it's gorgeous. Stars? Yes. So cross street from that, there's this little league field. And then there's a cliff and there's the Pacific ocean and it's like the end of Shawshank Redemption. Wow. Yeah. And they play little league games there. And anytime I've ever driven by it, I've always been like, that should just be a reality show. And I don't even have anything other than the title. Well, what are the moms like? Are the moms right. driving the kids in? Well, look, you is just there... said Malibu little league, Malibu but I little feel league, like... like right away. It rolls off the tongue, is right? It, it does. But I mean, is it little league colon Malibu? Because then we want to do little league colon Pensacola or you know whatever the other spin-offs are so you go little league colon Malibu that's what I'm wondering 
I like Malibu Little League, obviously. Malibu Little League's a it great title. It spoke to me right when you said I, I, it. I knew it would. It did. It's the best idea. It did. To, Tommy, you like Malibu Little League? Yeah. yeah. It's really good. There's a show on... You know, somebody sleeps with the coach. That happens yes. in season one. There's There's a you cast the coach. He's like 29-year-old. Yes. Super handsome. Yes. 6'2", totally willing to flirt with the moms. Yes. And you just go. That's totally. it. Boom. Totally. You're off because the dads aren't showing up. No, they're not around. The moms are in there. They're showing up in the Range Rovers and all that stuff. In Malibu. So in this third book, you were pretty open about your your uh, your sex life and stuff. I was, yeah, yeah. You ratcheted it up. I did. It's uh, it's uh, I my second book was a diary uh, of a year in my life, and I kept writing after I turned that one in. Yeah. And so thinking, you know what? I bet they're gonna want another one, and so much is happening that. I think it's cool. It's like I deconstruct everything from late night television to being famous to the housewives to to dating and everything else. So I was so into writing that I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put everything in this. And when I go back to edit the book, I'll take stuff out. But the truth is I didn't wind up taking out a lot that I planned on it. So there's a lot of kind of sex, drugs, and rock and roll in the book that I wasn't planning on keeping in there. And you said you were worried some of your friends would be upset about stories you, you passed on worried. and things like that? Yeah, there, I was worried about some of the housewives and some of the some of the celebrities on Watch What Happens Live. Uh, some of the people I went on dates with, I'm now hearing from, whose names I didn't use. Oh, they were I upset guess, that, you, that you didn't mention them? No, or that, that you I mentioned did. them in your I mean, pseudonyms? I, I went on a date with someone who was a bartender on my show, and it was like a really boring date. And he texted me like a screenshot of the page about the date and was like, you know, I actually had a really good time on that date. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> what's it? What's it? I mean, when did you become famous? Like 2010? I became famous. Uh, I'm going to say or, oh, it was be a, earlier. Than it was that, a from, slow build. So yeah. watch what happens live has been on for seven and a half years, but I hosted reunion shows for, for a few years before that. I'm going to say when it started then three years, but I'll tell you when the moment that I actually felt different, like, Oh, wait, cause it was this slow build. But I, there have been a couple moments. I remember getting recognized in the Chicago airport, and I was like, oh, well, this is interesting because I'm in Chicago now. And it just felt different. But the moment that I feel that people really started knowing who I was was when Teresa pushed me at that reunion. Wow. I was in the Hamptons when it aired. I It generated so much press, and I was like, wow, this is weird. And I started getting all these interview requests, and I came back into the city. I was on vacation, and I came back, and people all over the city were like, hey, and coming up to me, and like, you got pushed, dude, like all this stuff. And I was like, oh, wow, I think I'm famous now. Wow. Yeah, it was weird. What's been like the peak audience for one of the Housewives reunions? Oh. Has it gotten to like oh, it's gotten seven, eight, four. nine? No, no, it's gotten four, over four. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So how did that change? You know, because you were pretty open about you love to date and right. go out and do stuff. When pe when you notice people are treating you differently, did it become harder it's, to be like, do I trust this person? No, do they like me? I'm a I'm, really good judge of character. Yeah. And no, I mean, it's kind of the perception that you think people would be like, oh, I, you know, maybe it would be different if I was straight and girl, maybe and girls were, I think that sometimes girls, there's, if you're straight, there is more of a, I think energy about what is the long-term goal He Like, Oh, do you want to get married? Do you want to be in a serious relationship? Yeah. And I don't think it's as heavy with gay people. Does what about something like Tinder? Can you even be on? Tinder? I was on Tinder. Uh, and I was on Tinder for the, for the first diary book, the Andy Cohen diaries. And Part of me joined because I thought it would be interesting while I was writing this diary to go on Tinder dates. And it wasn't, the thing is you both have to swipe. So um, it's not like there were, I mean, they were random people, but they were people that I was interested in swiping on. And, you know, and, and to me, I was like, look, this is a way for me to meet like an architect in Brooklyn who yeah. I maybe wouldn't meet, you know, or a scientist on the Upper East Side. And so... I'll, you know, some of them knew who I was and some of them didn't, but I could pretty much tell. And then if I met them out for a drink, 
you know, it's like, look, if we sit down and they immediately want to start talking about the housewives, it's going to be a pretty quick date. Right. You know, so. So they go right to that. Boom. And you're like, oh. then I'm like, you know what? This is not. But yeah. what? So what, what should people talk to you about on a date? I don't know. Because, yeah, it sucks just, to talk about work. Yeah, I mean, I also, though, I, I do like talking about work. I just, I mean, you can just read a person's energy, whether it's uh, a fan thing. I wrote a story in the new book, uh, which is called Superficial, about it was meta, this moment, because I was on the book tour for the other book, and I was writing a diary of this book, where I wrote about meeting this straight couple who oh, I read tried this. to yeah. get together with me and we went out it was just it's a long story but i what through a weird series i was like yeah let's go out and so we went out for drinks and the woman was like a huge fan of mine and so it was this weird kind of dynamic of trying to the three of us like have a flirt going and her also being like oh my god what's what's lisa vanderpump like? you know what i mean so it's wild that's crazy yeah. have you had somebody come on one watch what happens live one of the guests we were like eh, they're kind of keeping the eye contact with me here a little bit longer than um, there's a, there's a yeah, vibe going couple. on yeah i've had some I've had some moments uh, with bartenders on the show and uh, yeah, with a couple people. Yeah. It's one of the perks of hosting a late night talk show. Who is the best? I, by the way, I always ask Kimmel about that. Okay. Even though Kimmel's had a girlfriend or a wife the entire yeah. time he has that show. Like yeah. there's times there's a guest going to come on where you're going to have a little kinetic connection yes. with yeah. them. Who is like your go-to? Like Letterman always had Terry Oh my God, Gar. I have so many go-to. God, those Terry Gar Lettermans. Terry Gar and Sandra Bernhard on Letterman. He made Terry Gar take a shower. He did. That, yeah. I don't he, remember He did that. a show in his office, and at the end of the show, oh he made Terry Hart take a... She was amazing. And Sandra Bernhard. Yeah, Sandra Bernhard was, was unbelievable. Uh, you know what? I, Sandra Bernhard is a go-to of mine, actually. She's on my radio channel, on my yeah. serious radio channel. And she lives in New York, and I'm friendly with her. She's a go-to of mine. R Rachel Dratch is a good go-to. I mean, obviously the house. I call it the housewives. My my kind of broadcasting role model is Howard Stern. Yeah, and I feel like no one goes there in late night. I, I feel like I go there in a way on late night in a way that the other hosts don't. And I don't know that you can go there on network TV in the way that I do or how it does. You can't. And I think that I I do. The reason I do it is because I started doing it with the housewives. And then I just was like, well, this is my deal and my shtick. So if you're coming on my show, I'm going to do it with you too. But so I view the housewives as my whack pack, like Howard Stern has his whack pack. And so they're my bread and butter on Watch yeah. What Happens Live. And then there's a whole galaxy of other people who I just love having on. You know, it's funny you mentioned Stern because you have the same skill that he does. And part of it is a skill and part of it is people know what they sign up for when they go on the show. 100%. They're on your show and you're going to ask them stuff. Right, and right. it's like, that's part of the deal. Right. We and don't pre-interview our guests. Yeah, and it's like they're a dick if they don't exactly. answer the questions. Like, why the fuck did you come on then? Right, right. So you have them trapped, which is how Stern operates. And he Not just only are they trapped, but in. I'm live. Yeah. Like Stern is too. So I'm the only live show in late night. You can't stop tape or else you're going to walk out. Right. Which is, not, I mean, and by the way, I'm kind of excited for the first guest to actually leave during that the show. That hasn't happened yet. That has not happened yet. Have you felt like a guest was Go, almost on, had the deer in the headlights? Like, yes. oh shit, I went oh, too far. several, yeah. yeah. Um, there was a moment where Alicia Silverstone was on with, with, Padma Lakshmi and Alicia Silverstone had that thing where she talked about that method of feeding your baby where you chew up the food and spit it in their mouth. I remember this. And it was a big controversy and I brought it up and I could tell immediately that she didn't want to talk about it, which would have been sign enough for me to change subjects and pivot, which I will because I don't want anyone to be uncomfortable. That's how I but feel too. Padma didn't see her eyes and Padma was like, what? That's gross. Why do you do that? Like, and she then wouldn't leave it alone. And I was like, oh God. And during the commercial break, 
it was like, cause we're live and she, Alicia Silverstone looked at me and I was thinking, and I think even her publicist came in and I was like, I go, I'm so sorry. Like I, I I'm off this. I'm, I'm through talking, you know, whatever. So there have been a few times like that. And the funny thing is, it's fucking weird. And I'm glad it's you brought weird. it up. weird. Who chews their food for right. their kids? Oh, that's I've weird. Yeah, such a thing. Yeah, yeah. No, that's weird. But it's weird to be, it's so fun and weird and interesting to be live. You know, you don't, you actually don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I could tell we went to see you, I think in 2000, it was like October 2014, because right? we were putting together the Greenland basketball show and we wanted to have a set like your set. Yeah. So we're like, let's just go. I like, know. Call I Davies. go, are you trying to rip my show off? No, no, no. Ours no, ended I, up I, somehow I being nothing like your right. set, even though. Right. Because what I, what I was intrigued by was, could we have the show here, but the, the, the 20, 30, whatever people, like right here. Mm -hmm. And the way ESPN does TV, it was, it, we just couldn't do it. It yeah. had to be like way back. But when we showed up. I just couldn't believe how small it is. And TV's yeah. always smaller in yeah. person. Yeah. But you have everybody yeah. like packed in on it's each teeny. other, which you like though. You like I the love energy. It. Of we it. just announced yesterday that we're moving to a big a new studio. I it's saw that. Just I was almost upstairs. disappointed. It is gonna look exactly the same. There's just kind of a it's like moving from a tic tac to a studio apartment, basically. And our audience is which was twenty two people, is gonna be like forty eight people now, which is huge for us, but it's still gonna it's still gonna feel the same so what do you think that does for the show i think it's it's a basically I think it's just gonna more be people a wash. reacting i think it's gonna be more people in the audience and it for me i've been doing this seven and a half years and so for me it's gonna be a great kind of energizing change uh but i feel like for the audience it will still feel as intimate and authentic i think that's what people excuse me, love about the show. It's totally authentic. It's an authentic half hour in a world of stuff that's kind of pre-produced and set up. And there's a lot of pre-interviews and there's, a, you know, it's like, oh, you recently went to Mexico. Tell me about that and telling the story. So I love it that the guests don't know what they're going to get into. L last night I had 50 Cent and Leah Remini on. And I wow. asked 50 Cent about the last time uh, Vivica Fox was on. She said she alleged that 50 Cent was gay on my show, and and that was one of those great live TV moments where I was like, hold up, what? Right. And I was like, and you know, and I turned to the camera in the control room. I'm like, kill the game, kill everything. I am not dropping this subject for a half an hour. Like we're beating this to death. So we start getting into it and it's a whole thing. And then 50 cent starts responding on Instagram. It was great. So last night was the first time 50 cent had been on since this happened. So I'm sitting there and I said, by the way, you know, last time, you know, I got to ask you, Vivica Fox was here and she said this and he said, well, that's cause I let her lick my ass. And she maybe thought that only gay guys let that happen or something. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. And then Leah Remini is like, oh, wait a minute. And I'm like, okay, we're staying on this topic. So, I mean, we beat this topic to death, but it was so awesome. And you know, you, this wouldn't happen anywhere else. You're no. not gonna, you know, and by the way, if I had said to 50 cents people, uh, by the way, I'm asking him about this gay thing. Of course, they would have shut it down and none of this ever would have happened. So it's great. So what do we think the answer is? What, about him being gay? I don't <laughs> yeah, think he's gay. A, yeah. <laughs> eh, it's, a, it's a really interesting counter. Yes. To the whole thing. And it also, it seems like a very hidden way for him to make Vivica Fox kind of look bad. Exactly. And now she is posting on Insta. It's like she has challenged him to go and watch what happens live together, which is, of course, my fantasy. Oh, that would be like your Super it's Bowl. Great. Yeah, exactly. Have you had one where you had the two guests where it's almost like you're pitting them against each other? In a way? We've had two guests. We've had guests on that don't seem like we've booked people purposefully that we've been like, Oh my God. Like we had Jay wow from Jersey shore on with James Fry once, or we had the author we had, um, we Jay had wow. J Jenna Jameson with clay Aiken. We had wow. Dan rather and John Mayer. We, we had Connie Chung and Matt Harvey from the Mets. Like, so we've had weird combinations of people um, that have just been fun. And then we've had other combinations that all of a sudden 
the show starts and you're like, oh my God, they hate each other. And everyone on Twitter's like, oh, your guests won't look at each other. What's going on? So you think they hate each other going into it or just it's an instantaneous? Sometimes someone will say something. I think it was Joan Rivers' last appearance. She was on with Maxim from Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. And he said something to her during the, we do a live promo at like 10 40 PM. Yeah. And we bring the guests in for it. He said something to her and she flipped on him and was like, she, and she said to me before the show, just watch, I'm going to eviscerate this guy on live television. Oh, no. And I was like, Oh my God, what's gonna, and then she, and then he got her back back during like within five minutes of the show he revealed to her that he was like jewish and a refugee and something something where i saw it flip and he got her back and i was like oh thank god because you know joan rivers when she turned on you there was no one more loyal and awesome than joan rivers but i have seen her turn on audience members who heckled her and also just you don't want to piss off a drag queen with a microphone, a rabbi with a microphone, or Joan Rivers. That's, and, that's the or three? Or a comedian. Or, or like, a, you know, a comedian. Just be careful a with drag comedians. queen with a microphone? Oh, drag that's queens with a mic are brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just Kate, you rate that one duck down? and cover. Okay. Just duck and cover. But yeah, no. So that was a, that was a, that was a wild moment. There was a moment where... I, there was a real housewife who came on and she was sitting in the second seat. There is no second. There's only two chairs on my show, but yeah. I have two guests at once. But And she was on with a big movie star and she took great offense that she, who considers herself this big star, was in the second seat. And she was like shut down for the whole show. Wow. And people were tweeting about it. People and, and, and I came back from commercial break and I'm like, people are tweeting that you seem very guarded and pissed off tonight is something going on she's like no I'm like all right who is the most beautiful person who has been on the show the oh, in person wow. that you're like just wow. you know what j-lo always everyone kind of, says j-lo is I'm the best you, she really does stagger me in person she is quite and i've had a galaxy of beautiful women on the show but she definitely is someone that jumps out to me yeah. I like that question because everybody has the first answer. Uh huh. Everybody has somebody that. Yeah. Blew and it's them hard for, for me to remember because it's been seven and a half. It's like, it's a lot of people, but she's definitely up there. Can I ask you a celebrity culture question? Yeah. Don't you feel like pe we have to be Team Brad or Team Angelina in this whole thing? I feel like I have to pick sides as if two well, of my friends were getting divorced. I feel like there's. It's there's no doubt about whose okay, side. Good. It's Brad. She's nuts. Thank you. She's nuts. Everyone in the ringer, everyone in the ringer, made me feel bad because I was like, I'm Team Brad. What? He's just this dumb stoner who he was if married you, to Aniston. Yes. Angelina got him. It got him into her fold. Right. All of a sudden, he's got six kids and right. four houses. And you have to and look at the history of her terrorizing i had a big scandal recently with melissa etheridge who came on my radio show and started uh talking about this and started trashing angelina and she used to be great friends with brad and um melissa etheridge was great friends with brad and and she's like look at angelina's history of taking people away from their friends and then destroying and all this stuff and she wound up getting a call from Angelina Jolie's fixer, who is the real life scandal lady, the real life Olivia oh, Pope, God. who said, who knew that Melissa then was coming on Watch What Happens Live that night. And she said, if you don't retract your statements about Angelina, we're going to go after you. And what does that even mean? I don't know, but Melissa Etheridge was all freaked out. And I had run into Melissa Etheridge that day. It's so weird. And she goes, I don't know what to do. And, and so that night before the show, she wrote a song called the fixer blues and she sang it on watch what happens live. And it was all about the real story of this fixer calling and her. No, did people know, or they just, yeah, she even... explained it all in the story. And I filled in the blanks before and after, and it was kind of amazing. And again, that's why I love live TV. You don't know what's going to happen. The Brad Pitt, it was like, oh, something happened on the airplane. 
the FBI is involved. And then in yeah. four weeks later, nothing. it's like, yeah, nothing happened she, on the airplane. She called TMZ and revealed all this. You know, I mean, this was a good one some... in terms of people had their little sides that they had that they mm -hmm. went to and fed information. Because it seemed like Us Weekly was pro Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of saying what his side of things and were. TMZ was, TMZ pre, was pro Angelina. Pro Angelina, yeah. But it was destined to fail yeah. because... By the Sea has been on HBO from time to time <laughs> right? over the last month. And I actually watched 10 minutes and it's basically like this fucked up married couple going, you know, and it's when, when married couples start making actual movies about yeah. married couples in trouble, it's bad. isn't that a red flag? And then yes. Brad Pitt's next movie is he's married to a German spy. <laughs> These are his two movie choices right. he makes. Like, of course he was having marital issues. Yeah. He knew. Yeah. I think he was just home at night with this big bong just thinking about his oh, four houses and thousands. his six kids and yes. he's like what did i do i right. have six kids who right. has six I'm kids from springfield missouri yeah i gotta deal with maddox now he's, he's he's like a character actor who's too handsome to be a character right. actor so he became a real actor thousand but really percent. he should have just been a character now actor and not have six kids shiloh's cultural diversity class no yeah, don't, I mean, he might have more than six kids. He might. I feel bad for him, though. I do, too. Do you don't think there's any way him and Aniston get back together, right? No. I mean, she's married. It's over. She's probably bitter. Y yeah, I think that's over. Aniston, Angelina, and Brad, we're never going to top it. No. For a celebrity story. I think it's uh, it's the peak. Yes. It's the peak story that yes. we'll ever have. It's true. It's, it's the true. most angry I've ever heard my wife and her friends really? about anything. Right. When he left. Just everything, yeah. And people forget, like, like Angelina. All the all the women were out on Angelina, and then yeah. they, she pulled them all back because she did yeah, some really cool things. The, you know, Audrey Hepburn, humanitarian. All of a sudden. Yeah, they yes. Wrote some great editorials, right, like right. all the the way she raised attention to breast cancer. Right. And it was, seems a million years ago she's like making out with her brother and all that stuff. I don't know where she goes now, Angelina. Yes. Is she a movie star anymore? That's. I the mean, question. she hasn't. The, the Lara Croft, like those type of movies, those are 10 years ago. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And it's Brad Pitt. I don't I mean, know. He really hasn't since Moneyball. He'll, he'll, he's going to, yeah. He wasn't very good in Allied, I heard. I hadn't seen it. I haven't seen it. Yeah, he looked I, pretty, like, going through the motions. Yeah, I haven't seen that. She only has Maleficent, too. That's the only thing she has. Oh, Malefic Malefic yeah, 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 Maleficent, Maleficent, yeah, too? Yeah. Her gimmick in the mid-2000s was... I am the best looking woman in the world right. and I could steal your husband in five minutes. Right. Don't leave me in a room alone with your husband. I will right. take him. Right. And I'm also a good actress. Right. Now I don't know what her gimmick is. I don't is. either. Her gimmick is I have six kids and I got a flat in my house in New Orleans and then my right. house in it's weird. Paris. Now and all it's that weird. Stuff. All right. So your book tour, where are you heading? Where, where else are you going? Uh, I'm almost done. I'm going to Miami tomorrow. I'm going to DC next week. Uh, I'm almost done. And then what it's happens? And do you then, write book four? How many? Yeah, I'm gonna do book four, but you I just don't, chronicle your life in these. No, books. I'm done with the diaries. Okay, I, 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 it became kind of emotionally and existentially exhausting living my life and reporting on it for publication at the same time. And so I am done with that. I I love to write. Uh, I love these books. I'll get another idea at some point, and then I'll just jam. But. Right now, I'm just focusing on Watch What Happens Live. And Malibu Little League. And Malibu Little League. Malibu Little League. We have yeah. that. Yeah, Tommy's yeah. ready. He, Tommy's yeah. ready to do stuff Malibu with it. Malibu Little League. Malibu Little League. And That's all we have. Aspen Little League. I, I feel like this is the one that is the re, maybe like Bridgehampton Little League. Like it's Hampton's only, Little League. Hampton's Little League. It's only in the real, real, like super high end. Scratch Pensacola. It's like. Really, like Star Island Little League on Miami. You know I have two I mean? goals. I have big ratings as one goal. And then yeah. the second goal is the the critical piece somebody writes about how we're exploiting the kids. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll be great. Oh, that'll just happen. Oh, typical reality. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Meanwhile, yeah. the 12 year olds are the real victims. Those right. are going to be my two goals for this. Yes, thing. exactly. Andy Cohen, this is a pleasure. Oh, I forgot one last question. Yeah. How did you get Andy as your Twitter feed? Uh, I bought it off some guy who didn't realize it was me buying it off of him. You, when was that? Ago. How many years it was ago? So many years ago. It's it, an I, amazing Twitter when handle. When I first joined Twitter, I tried to get it. And uh, I threw an intermediary, and the guy was like, no. And then it was Bravo Andy. And then a couple years after that, we kept offering, and he wanted what I thought was a lot of money. And then 
suddenly when I real suddenly I was like, wait a minute, this actually isn't so much money and this is valuable to me. And yeah. so yeah, I got it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm yeah. coming on your show at some point. I would I'm love so it. ready. Dave I would absolutely a, love it. Yeah. I don't know who you'd pair me with. And I wouldn't have a story about how somebody licked my butthole, but right. <laughs> I think I could be a good guest. I think you'd be a great guest. Yeah. I, 100%. Maybe not the, I couldn't cross the 50 cent line. Right. Right. Yeah. That's fine. There are other lines that will be Is crossed. that the craziest thing somebody said on your no. show? No. No, dude, we, we, it is unbelievable. We had Scott Eastwood, Scott Eastwood was on and he talked about, um, I was like, I think I said, have you ever, why did I ask him if he'd ever had a three way or I don't know. He revealed that like his ex girl or if he's been cheated on, he was like, yeah. Remember when Ashton Kutcher slept with that girl that broke up his marriage to Demi Moore? I'm like, yeah. He's like. I was dating that girl at the time. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> there, there, so many people say things that I'm like, hold on, what? Wait a minute, and then it turns into a big thing. It's great. But that's an amazing talent to be able to just get people to say shit like that. Yeah, it's great. Only a couple people have been able to do it, I and you're one of them. Love it. It's great. You, I, I mean, you must be like, ah. no, I love it, and I will be like, and I will latch onto it. Yeah. And my viewers know, they see me. Someone uh, tweeted a gif of me last night listening to 50 Cent talk about this whole thing. And I was like, you know, I was like a freaking, you know, a, a linebacker walking into the Palm Steakhouse. You know what I mean? And I was like, ah, yeah, great. Give it, give it to me. You All know? right, follow Andy on uh, Twitter, at Andy. And Get superficial. Superficial. More adventures from the Andy Cohen Diaries. Available on the, all the, the best Christmas gift for your lady that you will be able to get. She'll be thrilled. That is a good, really it's, good idea. It is a great. She'll be like, wait a minute. How did you know that I was going to want this book? What is? What do you think is the? My daughter's eleven and a half. Yeah. But loves celebrity culture. Yeah. And is already listening to Jam Session, a podcast uh -huh. that we have on the Ringer. Yeah. Um, when do you think she crosses that Real Housewives line? Well, I like think age it's thirteen, something like that. I think it depends. Again, I think it's a thing that I just I would want it with a little parental supervision so that she understands this is not to be emulated. This is actually horrible, you know, about she, some of the behavior. She has but a I good think sense she's of that. A Beverly, she's yeah. your kid. I think she knows. So. You know, she watched some Bachelorette, uh -huh. and I was really proud of how she reacted to right. some of the things that happened. That's good. It. it was all the reactions I wanted her right. to have. I was like, all right, this is good. It's, it's actually, good I was on NPR in San Francisco yesterday, and I got hammered by some callers who were like, your show, it's the end of civilization, oh and all God. this stuff. And I was like, you know what? Look, People know the difference between right and wrong, and this is escapism, and it's entertainment. And so... You know, I, I do think that for the kids. Good. Yeah. I'm so proud we got through all this without talking about the election. Me Kudos too, to us. actually. Who, I know. who the hell wants to even hear about it anymore? I, it's true. All this other stuff's I better. I know, it's true. All right. Andy Cohen, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Thanks so much to SeatGeek. That's our presenting sponsor and the only fan-friendly app for buying and selling tickets for sports and music. Drop your old ticket app. Use one bill for 2017 and beyond. Do everything on your phone. Download the free SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. Thanks to TuneIn Premium. Thanks to Betterment. And thanks to Channel 33, the Ringer's most eclectic podcast that figure, features the most entertaining shows for pop culture, wrestling, gaming, and more. Subscribe to Channel 33 and all of the other Ringer podcasts on your favorite audio platform. And don't forget to go to TheRinger.com where I have been writing. I wrote a big thing with Gladwell last week. I might have another thing coming this week. Go to TheRinger.com to find it. And we'll be back with this podcast on Friday, the Bill Simmons Podcast. Thanks for your support. Talk to you then.